how to improve your Minecraft FPS in 1.20.1. This is the Forge version of the tutorial, and I might do a fabric one later if you guys really like this video. And is that a pink sheep that I see in the background? What the frick game? It's only when I'm doing a gosh darn tutorial that I find a pink sheep. Now I'm using Curse Forge to make this a lot easier on myself. The first thing I'm gonna do is adding a bunch of mods to Minecraft, and we're gonna add in Embedium. Embedium is such a good mod because essentially the fork of sodium. By the way, the original version of this was actually Rubidium, but this adds in more compatibility for a Lot of different things so of course this might be a better option for some people textures options for nvidia extra options now these two don't really work together very well these two mods so you have to add in either one of these and this one is known to add in more performance fixes problem is this mod doesn't have a lot of compatibility with some other mods and so you might have some issues with that this one has more reliability i'm gonna go with the plus plus just because i don't need performance that much if you want more performance and you want to risk that chance then you can go with this one if you do have problems launching in minecraft then you should probably uninstall this and install that, you know? And the next thing we're gonna do is take a look at some chunk related mods. So there aren't really that many chunk related mods that work with this set of mods that we have here. There are a couple of them that are, seem to improve your performance, but the problem is a lot of this is server side. I wanna go for client side only. So these over here are server side mods. This right here is client side, but the problem is with chunk animators is that this doesn't work with Embedium because it already has it, I believe. And then these two right here are also server side. What isn't server side is this one right here, which is a client side mod for better FPS. And this adds in a bit of a new rendering system. It changes the square rendering system to a circular rendering system, loading in less chunks, but also maintains the amount of chunks that needed for a person to see a certain distance. So it isn't like squared, it's more circular, lessens the chunks around the corner mesh. Up next, we're gonna get in Ferret Core. This is a very nice mod for FPS. Up next, we're gonna get Cull Leaves. Now, there are a couple of versions of this that doesn't really work very well. I don't know exactly which one is the one that crashes a lot. I just know that this one right here is the more popular one because it's Cull, Less Leaves, Reforge. And this is the more updated one at the moment. Though both of them are really good and they basically do almost the exact same. There is also Entity Culling. So that this right here is also very important to install. AI improvements. I don't know if this actually gives you a lot of FPS. I've heard that this gives you a big performance boost. Modern Fix is a very nice mod to add in for performance as it basically tackles a little bit of everything. Up next, we're going to install Radium Reforge. So we're going to install this. Saturn is up next. We're going to install this. This improves your memory usage. Starlight improves your lighting engine. We're installing a lot of mods, as you can tell. Immediately fast speeds up your Minecraft rendering mode. <laughs> Redirector improves the, your game's performance. Pochium, which adds in more better at culling. Fast we improve the JSON recipe system. And there's also fast workbench and fast furnace, which also improves the crafting table and the furnace performance. There are a lot more mods that you can add in for performance, but for now, we'll leave it at this because if you add in too many FPS mods, eventually your performance will actually be negated or have a negative effect. A lot of these mods surprisingly act on different parts of the game. All right, now we have additional arguments. So this right here, by the way, is the allocated memory. If you can access all this by going to settings, if you do, do have Curse Forge, if you don't have Curse Forge, you can change this setting right here to fit your style. Basically, this right here represents your RAM. And if you make this an XMX, this is the total amount of RAM located. So in this case, I've located 11 gigs. It is going to load 8 gigs. And this all depends on how much memory your computer has. So obviously don't put a lot of it if you don't have a lot of memory. This one right here just is like a value that is automatically going to be inside of Minecraft. I'll post this down in the description for you guys to use. This has a bunch of other stuff such as garbage collecting and all that. So it would help you a lot with FPS, though not by as much as the mods will. Up next, we're going to change something in the config. So I'm going to hit the three dots here, go to open folder. And oh no, the config is in here. So I have to launch up the game. So now that we've launched up Minecraft at least once, we can finally see the config folder. And the config folder, it has a bunch of the configs of all the mods that we installed already. And the one that stands out is the Forge Clients. This will be in all of the Forge mod packs because this is the settings for your Forge Clients. So we double click on this and it'll open up. This is the always set up terrain off thread. And this improves your FPS if you have a computer that is capable of doing it. For the most part, most modern systems should be able to do this. So that's why I want everyone to say this is true. If it doesn't work, if you experience problems, turn it back to false. But for most modern systems, it should work. Now go to file, save, 
and that is it. If you do experience issues, then make sure to turn that off first before anything else. Now we're on to some of the more interesting stuff that people may have been wondering the entire time. How in the world do we change the settings to make it better for your FPS? The render distance, this you can change to whatever you want. Most likely if your computer is crap, then put around eight. That is very suitable for crappy computers. The most you'll probably need in a regular Minecraft scenario is probably 16. Or if you want to see a lot, then put it to like 32, maybe closer to 24, 27 ish. And then that's like the region that you want to have. But I like to have it on 32 if I can. If I can't, then I put it around like 22 ish, somewhere around there. For you guys, I recommend around eight. And then if it works for you, then raise it up a little higher. You do actually get FPS if your game is darker, but I don't recommend it because that would affect your gameplay experience. So put it on bright. Reduces the distance at which chunks are rendered beneath or above. And I think this, if you lower it, you have more FPS. If you increase it, you have less FPS. I think that's how it works. So like somewhere down here is a lower, low setting that, you know, you don't need to change too often. Set around like 100 to 50 and then see if that gives you more FPS. V-Sync for computers that have a good monitor, because this is based off the monitor's refresh rates. You might want to have this on off or maybe even adaptive might work with some computers, but off for me and then turn the max frame rate up to whatever the max frame rate is. So that's it for the general. For quality, of course, these are more self-explanatory. You turn this off to fast. You turn clouds off. You turn weather to fast. Leaves to fast. Particles minimal. Biome blend one. Smooth lighting off. Entity distance. This could, you know, vary very much. And this could easily affect your gameplay. So be very careful. Very, very careful with this setting. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to leave it around 100. Maybe 75 but I don't want to put on 50 because that would affect my gameplay significantly. Uh, Entity Shadows off, Vignette off, Distorted Settings, FOV Settings off, Mip Map Levels off, Apply. You have to apply after you change Mip Map because Mip Map will be a big doozy. Cloud Heights, put it on the, high, the highest heights because they're going to be out of sight. Though clouds in some cases can also improve your performance because if it's the only thing that's on the screen, then there's only one color on the screen, which is just white. But in almost every other case, just put it on at, at that. Use fog, turn this off. Performance. Okay, so this has a bunch of stuff that is already set to have like, you know, improve FPS. This right here, use fast chess, will also improve your FPS, I believe. There's also the cull leaves option. We could turn this down to one and apply, and that will give us the best FPS there. And this one varies significantly as well. This one might be better if you just put it all like a high number, but if you don't have those threads, then you've set it down to zero or like one. And this like varies because I get more FPS personally if I put it on 16 threads, but some people get more FPS if you put it on just like one thread or no threads. Same with this, this also depends on your CPU GPU because this one might be better if you put it on nine frames or it might be better if you put it on zero frames. I don't know because your computer is different, my computer is different. Just test it out, see if it works. Darkness mode, this helps with FPS because if you see less of the world, it improves FPS. I wouldn't recommend it if you don't have good vision, but setting it down to like dim is good enough for FPS. Maybe even just setting it down to dark for some people, but I'll set it down to dark. Entity culling. So this is the max distance for each of these ent entities. Um, you can have it on a lower level and that will make it very easier for your game to be run. However, this will also affect your vision on the enemies or your allies. So I wouldn't change this too much. Maybe even increase it a little bit in some cases because some cases might require you to have it increased. If you have terrible FPS, then I recommend lowering it down to like around this region-ish. But don't go too far or else it will be an unplayable experience. The rest of the stuff explanatory, um, if you turn all this, then basically you turn off and all, all animations and this will give you some uh, performance improvements. Same with particles, same with all of the different details. I don't exactly know much about how this, this like basically affects your performance, except for like the rendering, maybe not rendering the beams would help you improve it for your performance, but I wouldn't change too much of this. And yeah, that that's basically it. Also one underrated FPS settings is your FOV. 
If you do lower your FOV, you get more FPS because you see less on your screen. If you increase it, you see more on your screen, therefore it's more um, laggy. So FOV normal is fine. Maybe you want to get more FPS out of your game, crank it down lower. And there is a, a thin borderline between playable and unplayable. But now that we've changed all of those settings, this is the experience that we're left with. And for most people, this is playable on it, its own extent. Now you can see the FPS is a tough corner. So my computer is usually really good at FPS. So you can see the crazy numbers that my computer is getting. Of course, but this isn't like a very lackluster biome either because we're in a bit of a thicker uh, desert biome with some, some insane terrain generation. There's even some Mesa here and there. And I'm even flying around a little bit and it just loads in so smoothly. Now, because my my game is obviously like doing all this because I have a good computer, let me change it to the settings that I would use. And by the way, this was with the 22 chunks. So this is like really good. So I kind of put it back to the other settings that were already there. And of course, there are some slight differences with those settings. This is now utilizing a lot of the FPS mods that don't have set settings, but just naturally improve the FPS game. Such as Starlights, such as the Radium and all those other mods. So this is still being improved by all those other mods. And if you're curious about what my regular settings are in Minecraft, at least without anything changed, that's it right there. And as you can see, this gave me a significant FPS boost, even though I don't really need it. However, this is very necessary for if I want to play, let's say, shaders. So obviously, I would need these mods very much so if I want to play something crazy like shaders in Minecraft or run those mods in Minecraft. Like just anything mod related, and so what's really great about these mods is that even though I might not need these mods for regular Minecraft, in case I want to play modded Minecraft or better yet, if I want to run shaders in Minecraft, this is the way to do it because I can FPS boost my system a crap ton using these mods and maybe even more mods that I don't even know about because there's a lot of mods that can improve FPS and I can add more mods to improve FPS as well. With that in mind, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like this video, like if you want to subscribe, subscribe and be top of the top. I'll see you next video. Take care and good. Bye.